Sa ating panahon ngayon, marami sa atin na takot sa suffering. Sino ba ang di matakot ng suffering? Dahil gusto natin yung kultura na iniiwasan natin yung inconvenience. May daling na galit, basta kahit na sa traffic, may nag-aaway na. Dahil para sa atin, the less we suffer, the happier will be. Gusto natin kaligahayahan, kasaganahan ng buhay. Yon ang gusto at karamihan sa atin, di ba? Ang kasaganahan. Pero alam nyo, iba ang sa mga santo. Bakit? Ang mga santo sa kanilang mga uh, sulat, sabi ni Padre Pio, It is precisely suffering that strengthens us, humbles us. At ito'y may tawag, may ituring na uh, forgative suffering. Unang level ng suffering. At alam nyo ba mga kapatid, kung ang mga anghel ay capable of envy, mag Si silo sila sa atin sa dalawang mga bagay na nasa atin na wala sa kanila. Una, ang Eucharist. Pangalawa, ang suffering. Bakit? Tingnan niyo yung uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 24. Meron tayong participation sa suffering ng ating Panginoong Hesus. Ang mga santo nagturo sa atin na suffering is of such great merit that is greater than external works such as preaching, writing, or even working miracles. Imagine mga kapatid, ang suffering ay mas malaki pa ang merito daw kaysa nangangaral ka at gumagawa ng milagro. Pero, Parang nakalimutan ng karamihan ang doktrina at aral ng simbahang katoliko kaugnay sa suffering. The defining moment of redemption for humanity was not when our Lord pinagaling ang may sakit, binuhay ang patay. Hindi nagsimula nung siya ay nangaral doon sa sinagoga. Ngunit ang kaligtasan ay nangyari. It was when Jesus was crucified and drained of His blood out of love for mankind. So we see then that the, that there is no greater measure of our love than our willingness to follow in the footsteps of our Redeemer. So by doing so, we join in the redemptive work of Christ through our sufferings. Ibig sabihin, we become little co-redeemers and the merit conversion and sanctification of souls. Ano sabi ng mahal na Berhen Maria? Sabi niya, many souls go to hell because there is no one sacrifice themselves and free. Pakinggan natin si Father Jose Francisco Sikea sa kaniyang aral kaugnay sa suffering. Kung bakit kailangan natin itong yakapin at magiging meritorious if we are in the state of grace. Dahil sa buhay sa mundong ito, dalawa lamang ang pwedeng mangyari natin mga kapatid. To suffer without Christ, yun ang napakapiligro. Suffer without sanctifying grace and to suffer with Christ. Kaya sa anima, Christy, suffer me not to be separated from you. Si Father Jose Francisco Sikea. I think that uh, many people don't realize And now, a second point, why we carry our crosses and why we should carry it well is that we offer our sufferings for the love of Jesus Christ. So una, we suffer for the sake of the redemption of others. Pangalawa, 
We suffer in order to show our love for Jesus. Okay? And this is something also that is important. We can only know Jesus' love for us when we see the stark reality of what he did for us on the cross. Right? When I went to uh, Rome to study uh, the ministry of exorcism, I, I was able to uh, go to a place where it, there were replicas of the passion of Jesus, the replica of the tools uh, to bring about the passion of Jesus. Tapos nandun talaga yung mga the replica of the nails, napakalaki mga pako, and even the crown of thorns was not simply a like a garland. It was really a, a ha, parang sombrero siya no? that will and it, uh, that will fit the entire head. Okay? And uh, they toured. There was a short tour about uh, uh, about the Shroud of Turin, and I saw all of this. And uh, I saw really how how much okay, the Lord truly suffered. And we know we can understand why he sweated blood because of this physical torture. And we have to understand that Jesus was very hard to kill because he had the perfect body. Okay, we know that his body came from Mama Mary, okay, uh, who was pure, freed from uh, any kind of stain of sin, and therefore his body was a perfect human body. And therefore, napakahirap patayin si Jesus. That's why if you look at The Passion of the Christ, the movie, Mel Gibson based it on the book from the visions of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. And it, was, it is there that you read how hard it was to kill the Lord. And therefore, this Lord suffered much longer than any human being. And secondly, his suffering was not simply physical suffering. What made him really sweat blood was spiritual suffering. He experienced what we would experience if he did not die for us. He experienced the abandonment of the Father. And he experienced the full brunt of all the sins. And the, what we may say, uh, imagine God who's infinitely pure, tapos kaharap niya, he's faced with even one little sin is a very big contradiction to an infinitely pure God. And imagine all the sins of the world were placed on his shoulders to carry and to expiate. Okay? So this itself caused him so much spiritual anguish that he sweated blood. Wala naman tayong nababasa na uh, mga tao na kapag sila ay ipapako sa krus o ibibitag ay sila ay uh, pinapawis ang dugo. Okay? This is not normal. Okay? But with Jesus, why did he sweat blood? His sweat was blood. It was because, not simply because of the physical suffering, because no one really sweated blood because of physical suffering, but more of the spiritual suffering, which was much, much worse. Precisely because the, the judgment that God would put on the human race because of sin and our continual sinning, iniligay lahat, the penalty was placed entirely on, on Jesus Christ. Okay? Spiritually, he felt that what it would mean to be abandoned by God. He felt the experience of being abandoned by the Father. And therefore, he experienced all of this so that we do not have to experience it anymore. And therefore, what is very important is that we suffer in order to be able to at least alleviate in a little way the suffering of Jesus, to say that, Lord, you are not alone. St. John Paul states that the early followers of Jesus had this in mind, that through their sufferings in a certain sense they repay the infinite price of the passion and death of christ and i would like to quote also saint Alphonsus de Liguri, who say, states that a soul can give no surer mark to god of love for him than voluntarily to suffer to please him this is the great proof which jesus christ has given of his love for us and this is a proof that we ourselves love jesus because it, it is even easy to say praise the lord when everything is fine but to say lord i love you and i trust in you when things are dark that takes a lot of love that brings out out, out of our comfort zone and draws out love from our hearts okay and therefore this is something that is pleasing in the eyes of god this proves the love of god that we love god that's why sabi saint Teresa of avila the great doctor of the church Love is the measure of our ability to bear our crosses. Suffering is therefore like creating a gift for someone you love. Okay, for example, a, a, a mother, and yung anak niya may sakit. 
and she wants to do a lot of good things for for him he will not delegate it to someone else no some nurse or a caregiver whatever she would want to do it himself, herself even though she will suffer a lot because of the inconvenience of being there seeing the sick child but she will want to do it she will not relegate the work to someone else she will do it because of love she would want to show her child that she loves him and that is also why we carry our crosses to show jesus that yes lord you love us through that suffering and i know how much you suffered and i want to repay me in my own very little way to show you that i appreciate you and i'm grateful and i love you so although jesus is now resurrected he is now in heaven and cannot anymore suffer physically when he was at the garden of gethsemane he experienced the burden of all sins from the past to the future because with god there is no time okay hence what we have done even today and will still do already affected jesus in the past at the garden of gethsemane so you have to understand when during the garden god jesus himself saw all the sins that will be committed even in the future and he also saw all the sufferings that will be offered to him because of love for him he saw the sufferings that we will offer to him the suffering that i will offer that i will for example offer to him today he saw it during the garden garden of gethsemane and that gave him some consolation that alleviated in some way his suffering that is why sabi ng isang author jesus may and does know now that he was relieved of suffering in the past and it is a joy of being able to afford this relief which took place long ago that is the incentive to acts of renunciation at the present day okay that means jesus during his suffering in the uh, in the garden of gethsemane and on the cross knew already okay, what uh, knew and experienced consolation because of the sufferings i'm offering him today okay? it already affected him during that time another point is that we carry our crosses well in order to give glory to the father okay now this is very important also as a painting kapag may isang larawan na napakaganda ito yung nagbibigay ng nagbibigay ng bibigay tangi sa gumawa ng larawan na yan yung pintor so as a painting done perfectly gives glory to the, its painter god is glorified when a christian faces the crosses of life with faith hope and love that means we become another christ we become uh, a masterpiece of jesus of god we become like jesus and instead of the cross destroying us it makes us holier and therefore the more god is glorified in us because his work okay his work is is being fulfilled in us okay. and uh, today we are called by god especially now with this pandemic and a lot of people confused suffering and looking for god we can now at this very moment become a witness to the glory of god we, can, we many people are looking now for for some form of security and light we can now at this moment become light to the world and uh, beacons of light to the world and also we can also be salt of the earth during these times many people now are searching for god okay because they have seen that they with their own powers they cannot resolve this issue and therefore they are now realizing that they are not god and this is a great moment of grace but we have to be there to point them to the right direction that yes by witnessing and uh, through teaching preaching and witnessing within our with our lives about uh, that in spite of all of this we are beacons of love of faith of confidence of calmness okay of hope we become beacons and witnesses to the world that god exists that there is a god and that he is very much alive and is even until now working and he works more especially during the darkest of times and we can witness now to many people of this reality now is the best opportunity to witness to this because man now is vulnerable and he's he like when a person is sick usually or dying he becomes more open to what is transcendent so ito ay isang paraan right? a means by which 
we can really shine as witnesses of Jesus Christ. So let us, and also we must not forget not simply to assist them with our corporal works, but we must also pray for them. For many will be needing our prayers. And who are these people needing special our prayers today? Not those whom we usually pray for. Yung mga tao na madalas sa ating pinagdadasal, yung ating mga loved ones, etc. But those who because of their past lives do not know God, or did care that He existed, or those who have a wrong conception of God. May mga, galit, may mga iba na nagagalit sa Diyos, bakit eh, with all the prayers, hindi pa natatanggal yung itong virus na ito, bakit hindi pa natatanggal ng Panginoon? No? Because the concept of God is a Santa Claus type of God. Okay? If you look at the life of Jesus, okay, He struggled to accept the cross, and the cross occurred in His life. Okay? But we see what occurred afterwards. So we pray for those not only who have a wrong conception of Him, but those who also are so self-absorbed due to their sufferings, or because the crisis has made their self-centeredness into selfishness. Those with little or no faith before all of this occurred will especially be struggling. They will be filled with fear because they have never developed a real faith life. Okay? Now, the important thing is they will need prayers. They will need to invite God to their lives, into their lives. But because they don't have the capacity or they lack the faith at this moment, we should fill in the gap and pray for them. We are the ones who should invite God that He enter into their lives. And therefore, praying for these people, especially those who don't know God or who have never taken Him seriously, okay, is much more relevant today than before. Because right now, okay, they, they can either go either way. We know that a lot of young people, when they experience problems, they commit suicide. Mas lalo ngayon, the dip, we can be certain that frustration and depression will come in as this lockdown continues. And the more that those who have not bolstered their life with God, they have no relationship with God, will experience the most difficulties, the most confusion, the most, the most, uh, the, uh, the, the most depression, uh, the, the most uh, frustration. So God respects our freedom, and therefore, we pray for these people, okay? whether because of their faith is weak or they're filled with fear because they don't know who God is or they have a wrong concept of God. We as a church must fill in this gap and invite God for them into their lives. Just like in an exorcism ministry, when a person comes to us and nagwawala yung tao, he's possessed by the evil one. It is the faith of the exorcist and the people around who make up for the lack of faith. Just like a baptized child, because he cannot yet answer uh, the profession, the profession of faith, is the parents who make up for that lack of capacity, and therefore we today, many people, are in need of this type of intercession. This is a work of mercy. I remember this story in the United States about a person na nasatas ng isang gusali. He went to work early, so siya lang iisa. I don't know, it was five floors or seven floors. But suddenly, when he opened the door, biglang may usok, may sudog na pala. So he went to his office, he looked down, it was filled with smoke, and the fire in the hallway was getting closer and closer and closer and closer, and he didn't know what to do. So what he did was he opened the window, he went to the ledge, and stood there waiting, uh, not knowing what to do. And he kept on hearing voices sa baba. No? Through the smoke, he could hear people shouting, Tumalun ka na, tumalun ka na. Okay, jump, jump. But he didn't recognize these voices, so he didn't know what to do. He, 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 the flames were closing in on him, but before it reached him, he heard the voice of his father that said, Anak, it is all right, jump. Okay? This happened in the United States. So he jumped and he was caught by the firemen. Okay? They had a, a big, uh, some form of tarpaulin. So the miracle here is first and foremost, with so many people shouting, he recognized the voice of his father. And not only that, he trusted in the voice of his father. It is because we can be certain that this boy grew up 
with a deep intimate relationship with his father that the love relationship between the father and the son was constant in his life and therefore agad-agad naridig niya ang voices ng kanyang na 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 na, na discover niya no among all the many voices he was able to distinguish the voice of the father and without any doubt whatsoever when the father told him to jump he jumped he jumped and therefore he was saved there was no doubt in his heart and therefore we can see what type of relationship he had with the father a close intimate loving trustful relationship and this is something that we have to take into account because many people who are experiencing the fire will not be able to recognize the voice of the father because if you have not built up any relationship whatsoever during the times of crisis the more you will not be able to hear his voice okay you will not be able to recognize it you will not ever be able to recognize the voice of god from the voice of the devil because you are not used to the voice of god and secondly if the lord tells you to do something you will not even trust that god is telling you to do something that will save you okay? like jump and therefore this is these are people whom we have now to pray for precisely because now they're discovering that they need okay this uh this god but they don't know how to bring it about and we who have the lord has trained for many years we are called now to show them the way now many people are distraught and confused because many people have been forced to stop their worldly lives and be with themselves okay so it with no more distractions wala nang distractions wala nang uh, lumalabas papuntang mall or you know uh, gatherings parties this i'm sure is frightening to many since the inner demons and the vacuum within them that has always remained outside their consciousness because they are filled with workaholic sila or they are filled with so many things to do unti unti lalabas yan it will be brought to consciousness Adding to this is that the virus forces us to confront the reality that we are not gods, nor is money, nor science, nor any man in... Okay, ang talk na ito ni Father Sikia ay sinagawa nung kasagsagan ng pandemic. Kung maalala ninyo, meron ding isinagawang sunod-sunod na solemn exorcism sa pandemic. No? At napakahalaga talaga ang uh, suffering sa buhay ng tao. Eh, ituloy muna natin si Father Sikia. But we forget that the most important thing is the, are the spiritual works of mercy. Because the most important thing is to save the soul. And not only that, if they discover God in their lives, everything else will follow. Because I can continue giving a lot of things to, the, to someone who is in need. But unless he has connection with God, it will not be a blessing for him. Because if this, pag natapos na lang ang problema na ito, babalik ulit siya sa kanyang dating buhay. Okay, which is uh, a life of uh, poverty, okay? a life of uh, uh, being away from the Lord. So the most important thing is not only do we help corporally people, but we have to always to add a spiritual dimension. Ang tanong, handa ka bang yayakap sa mga kasakitan sa buhay ito bilang pagsunod ng ating Panginoong Hesus. There are three types of sufferings, mga kapatid, sa aral ng simbahang katoliko. Una, tinatawag itong purgative sufferings. Purgative sufferings na acts to purify and humble our souls. Pwede yung suffering can be physical tulad sa kay doktor o pwedeng emotional, humiliation, persecution. At pwede din yung tinatawag na spiritual dryness, dryness in prayer. Pero kung ating pagsikapan din na If fight yan, malaki ang meritorious sa ating buhay. So, purgative suffering is the first and the most necessary step towards union with our Lord. 
because it helps divest from the soul, the old man, yung tinatawag na concupiscence. Pride, avarice, lust, and worldly attachment. Ipinakita mismo ng ating Panginoon ang buhay bilang mahihirap dahil ito'y nagpaalala sa atin na lahat, bawat isa sa atin, huwag natin kalimutan. We are just passing through and we are not entitled to own anything that is more than what we need today. We're just passing through. Kaya inaaniyahan tayo, lalo na sa mga worldly attachment. At kung matapos na itong purgative suffering, at kung maalala natin ang prayer ng Anima Christi, suffer me not to be separated from you, magiging itong unitive suffering. The purification enables the soul to be united with God, making it. A image of himself to be as if a little Christ on earth. Yun ang binanggit ni Father Sikia. Nalala niyo kahit yung uh, pothaw, kailangan dadaan sa apoy at i-form talaga. Mainit yan, oh, pokpokin, para maporma talaga kung gawin man itong etak. At ang pangatlo ay tinatawag na redemptive suffering. Ano yung redemptive suffering? Redemptive suffering is the highest form of suffering because it is directed not inward towards the souls on sanctification but outward towards others. Ito ang suffering ng ating Panginoong Hesus. At alam nyo ba, kahit ano, if we are in the state of grace, Any form of suffering, no matter how small, has the potential to take on a redemptive character. Kahit lagnat, kahit pa sakit ng ngipin, St. Teresa says that even a totek can be offered for the conversion of sinners. The more a soul has been tested, and tried in the previous two kinds of sufferings, the more graces will its redemptive suffering merit. Kaya ngayon, mga kapatid, pwede nating i-evaluate sa ating buhay. Ano kaya? Yung ating paghihirap sa kasalukuyan. Naghihirap ba tayo sa kasakitan na Daladala natin kasama ang Panginoong Hesus o naghihirap ba tayo na walang Panginoon? Tandaan natin ang panalangin, Suffer me not to be separated from you. Dalawa lamang ang pwedeng mangyari sa mundong ito. To suffer without Christ and to suffer with Christ. Kaya, hilingin natin mamuhay tayo sa sanctifying grace na bigyan tayo ng grasya ng Diyos sa pagyakap sa kasakitan hanggang sa huling bahagi ng ating buhay para sa conversion unbelievers and poor sinners. To make His message known is our responsibility 